Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to start a series on developing complex coordination. So I've talked a lot on this channel about developing coordination. It's a big part of what this channel is about is developing the technique in drumming to play musically. This is really the most technical instrument you could imagine. Um, it's the easiest instrument to play on the basic level, but it's the most difficult instrument to play on a virtuoso level because there's so much involved technically. And drumming's come so far since the beginning of the drum set uh, where the coordination demands are just off the charts compared to what they were even when I was a kid. So these days you have to be able to do all kinds of things with your feet and your hands to play different kinds of music. So right there, I was just playing a little bit of a sort of an Afro-Cuban fusion thing and improvising a little, but you saw how I was playing that clave with my left foot. So the subject of this video series is going to be developing, like I said, complex coordination with one or all of your limbs and being able to switch those limbs around. and really getting it so it's organic, so you're not thinking about it when you're doing it. And that takes a long time. So when I'm practicing, which I do a lot of, I'm always thinking in terms of development. What do I have in development, the development stage? What's ready to play? What's ready to show you guys out there? What's ready for me to play on a gig where I can completely relax? So lots of things I work on are not gig ready. I wouldn't go out and play them on a gig or recording. Uh, they're always in a sort of perpetual development. And over the years, I get these things down and then I introduce them into my vocabulary. So it's kind of like learning a new word or a new language when you're working on very complex things. It takes a long time to develop, so then you go out into society and you can have a conversation with someone so they can understand what the heck you're saying uh, without them laughing at you. <laughs> so the whole idea here with this series is going to be showing you how to develop these things from stage one all the way through to the end till you can take it out and feel comfortable and not get nervous on a gig and execute it like you want to. So the technical and the musical are sort of uh, the same thing. Although most people view them on opposite sides of the fence, they're literally the same. If you have all these great ideas in your head, but you can't get them out, they're kind of useless, right? You know what they sound like, but no one else will because you can't play them, you can't execute them because you don't have the technique to do it. And like I said a minute ago, the technique on this instrument takes a really long time to develop. Most of it's going to be done through repetition, so doing things over and over again until your body is comfortable. And every day your body feels a little different, so you might be working on something for a month and then get in there one day and like you feel like you're crippled. You can't do anything. But again, that's part of the development. Eventually, no matter what, you know, you might have a fever, you might be sick, you might be sad, you can go out and perform at a high level. So your worst performance will sound good to most people. Your best performance will basically freak people out, all right? That's the way you wanna think of these things. So when I'm in a development stage for a particular idea, I may take a year working on it till I'm really comfortable, till I start playing it a lot. I might play it a little here, a little there on a gig, but until I'm really ready uh, to do that, uh, I wait. So we'll talk today uh, and in a few videos after this about doing the clave rhythm, which seems to be popular with a lot of you because I get a lot of emails about it. How did I develop it? Uh, Right now, that's become standard. When I was a kid and I was playing uh, congas and timbales, I was doing that a lot with my left foot when I was playing gigs because a lot of times, you know, it just felt good to do it. My feet weren't doing anything, so I just would do that. And then eventually I put it on the drum set. And pretty much, you know, that's kind of standard procedure now to be able to play all the claves, soon rumba, two, three, three, two, with that left foot. But I'll show you how you can develop it because it is difficult no matter what. And you need to be able to play that uh, with all kinds of coordination. So your hands can play over it, and then your bass drum can play anything. So we'll focus on that for this particular video on playing bass drum rhythms over that clave. So the first thing you want to do is get some rhythms. So over the years, um, you've seen me put videos on this channel with my book that has a lot of rhythms in it. But there's lots of other books that have rhythms too. So I, I made myself years ago this packet 
of rhythms that has about 30 or so pages of rhythms from many different books, including my book, the Gary Chester books, Louis Belson book, um, some uh, syncopation, different books. So those of you who have those books, you should do that first. Have enough rhythms on hand that you could really challenge yourself to do something different every day. That's really important. And if you don't know how to read, learn how to read because it makes learning so much faster. So we'll work with my book because I know most of you have it today. and We'll use particular pages uh, to do that. So the first thing you want to do if you have the book is go to page 188. This has basic quarter note and eighth note rhythms. And we're going to start there because that's the easiest thing to navigate through this. So the right hand is going to play this rhythm on a fixed surface. I like to use a closed hi-hat. It's nice and dry. I don't have to lift my shoulder up. And the main thing when you're developing rhythms like this is to completely relax because you're doing lots and lots of repetition. And repetition can lead to injury if you're tight and you're, you know, you're just not playing relaxed. So you want to make sure you're playing relaxed. So that right hand rhythm is going to be this simple thing. All right, so that's just a basic, you know, eighth note groove. So like this. We all know that, right? So you put the clave under it and it sounds like this. Now that's not easy by itself, so you might want to repeat that about a thousand times till it feels completely relaxed. And then record yourself, make sure the groove is good, use a metronome. A good tempo for this is about 80 to start with. So it would sound like this. So don't go too fast, make sure you're relaxed. And then keep boosting that up until you get to about 100, which is a good rock tempo, so. Now you saw there, I'm adding my left hand on backbeats, doing a little bit of ghosting, you know, adding a little spice to it so it doesn't sound so vanilla or taste vanilla. So uh, I'll show you that again. All right, so that's our ostinato, that's our repeating pattern. And then we start. And so when you start doing these bars on page 188, you want to do one note at a time, so, or one beat at a time, I should say. So there's four beats in a bar, and you'll just do that beat, the first beat, over and over again until it's comfortable. So I'll show you that. One, two, three, four. So that's the first beat of that bar. And you see how I added stuff? I start with my hi-hat, add the clave, add the back beat, and then I read it. That's how you should start approaching it to make sure everything's working well. Don't just dive right in and, and try to do everything at once. That's just going to frustrate you. And then you add one beat at a time. So now we'll just do beats one and two. So again, do that over and over until it's comfortable. Repetition is the key here, all right? So there's no stress, it sounds good, it's comfortable. You can basically use it on a gig. And then we're gonna add the rest of the beats to the bar here. One, two, three, four. And then we'll do the next bar. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
and then we do that with all the bars, okay? Once we get that line like that, we try to do the whole line, which is a whole other can of worms. So that takes a lot of concentration. We'll try that. And then again, you'd repeat that line over and over. Once again, repetition, repetition, over and over until it's comfortable. Then what you might want to do is just play around with some different tempos, and that's really important. So that's normally the next step in the development are tempos. So we'll go slower first. Sometimes playing slow is more difficult than playing fast. So we'll go to 90. One, two, three, four. And then we'll do it faster. We'll go to 110. I like to do these things in 10 point increases. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Once again, the metronome is your friend here. As many different tempos as you can do. You need to function at different tempos without rushing or dragging. Next, I'll play around with the feel of it. So we'll go back to 100. So instead of playing straight eighths, I'll do a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a triplety feel. One, two, three, four. So you get that feel too, because everything can have a little bit different feel to it. That's sort of a shuffly feel. So now to get to that point, we're talking it might take you a month or more but you've got to be patient. Part of the thing I love about doing this is the process, is, you know, getting a grip on the basic coordination and watching yourself progress from nothing into this whole thing where you can improvise. So that's the first step. Get it uh, uh, where you can play a basic ostinato pattern, which is that backbeat. We can all relate to that pretty much, and then work on that with your left hand. Now, the next step would be to play more complex rhythms. So if you went to page 189 of my book, you'll see the introduction of some syncopated rhythms. So we'll play that first line for you. One, two, three, four. So now all of a sudden, we have those 16th notes, which make it a lot more funky. I'm still doing that bouncy feel, which feels good with the clave like that. Uh, and then you just work through that page. I'll play a few more lines for you. Here's from line two. One, two, three, four. So that's a little bit of line three as well. So that's it. You just proceed, and it may take a while. Be patient, but you know this stuff is going to be difficult. The next step is to change up your right hand. So uh, I like to keep track of these rhythms with a little notebook, and I wrote a little thing down here. So a good one is page 13, number 11 right hand, which is this, and then we'll do the same thing with everything else, right? So we'll go back now to page 188, Rhythms, and we'll play that. One, two, three, four. So 
So that's the way you do it. And you just keep adding rhythms and different rhythms. You could do this. Whatever rhythm you want to do, they're all here. Lots. And the idea is to get it organic. So you can play anything with your right hand while keeping that going and so forth. So that's just the right hand. So in the next video, we're going to talk about actually developing it where you can play the left hand rhythms under the Kaskara and that, which sounds like this. And finally, we'll talk about soloing, which is the final application over all these things is to be able to solo freely and by freely I mean you could play out <laughs> and keep that going so you can be playing in different meters and speeding up and slowing down so uh, to play you out here I'll do a little bit of that for you but we'll see you next time with that next part of this video series